Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's day 327 of our three-year journey through God's Word, and we've come to Joshua chapter 23. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us another day of life. Thank you for giving us another time to spend in your Word. We pray that you would write your Word on our hearts and that you would shape our hearts to reflect you in our lives. Would you work in us, strengthen our faith, help us to embrace and receive your promises fulfilled in Christ, and to live in the light of your word, and not in the light of our own selfish thinking or the world's foolish patterns. We pray these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua chapter 23. A long time afterward, When the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their surrounding enemies, and Joshua was old and advanced in years, Joshua summoned all Israel, its elders and heads, its judges and officers, and said to them, I am now old and well advanced in years, and you have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. For it is the Lord your God who has fought for you. Behold, I have allotted to you as an inheritance for your tribes those nations that remain, along with all the nations that I have already cut off from the Jordan to the great sea in the west. The Lord your God will push them back before you and drive them out of your sight, and you shall possess their land just as the Lord your God promised you. Therefore be very strong to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, turning aside from it neither to the right nor to the left, that you may not mix with these nations remaining among you, or make mention of the names of their gods, or swear by them, or serve them, or bow down to them, but you shall cling to the Lord your God just as you have done to this day. For the Lord has driven out before you great and strong nations. And as for you, no man has been able to stand before you this day. One man of you puts to flight a thousand, since it is the Lord your God who fights for you, just as he has promised you. Be very careful, therefore, to love the Lord your God. For if you turn back and cling to the remnant of these nations remaining among you and make marriages with them so that you associate with them and they with you, know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you, but they shall be a snare and a trap for you, a whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good ground that the Lord your God has given you. And now I am about to go, the way of all the earth. And you know in your hearts and souls, all of you, that not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one of them has failed. But just as all the good things that the Lord your God promised you have been fulfilled for you, so the Lord will bring upon you all the evil things until he has destroyed you from off this good land that the Lord your God has given you, if you transgress the covenant of the Lord your God, which he has commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the good land that he has given you. Here in the last couple of chapters of Joshua, we come to Joshua's final speech, his final address to the nation that he has led for a long period of time. Uh, Normally, we do two chapters in the Old Testament and jump back to the New Testament, but we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be doing chapter 24 tomorrow, just so we can finish Joshua uh, coherently, and then going back to 1 Timothy 2 uh, after that. But... One of the things that strikes me about what Joshua says here at the end is that it has some symmetry to what was said to him 
at the beginning. So look at verse 6. Therefore be strong to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, turning aside from it neither to the left nor to the right. And then if we were to look back at Joshua chapter 1, where Joshua first got his charge from the Lord, we go to Joshua chapter 1 and look at verses 7 and 8. This is what Joshua was told at the very beginning. He was told, Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses my servant commanded you, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may, get, may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So we can see that just about the exact same thing, right? that the Lord charged Joshua with in Joshua chapter 1. Be strong. Be careful to do all that the, is written in the law. Don't turn away from it to the right, to the left, right? Just that same thing is what Joshua passes on to the people at the end of his life. He is faithful, and that is the mark of a faithful leader. From generation to generation, to guard the trust of what has been commanded and pass it on faithfully to those who are coming afterward. Sometimes leaders think that it's their job to innovate, to inspire change, to bring about new ideas. Joshua doesn't believe that, and Joshua didn't do that, and that's what made him a faithful leader. Not, again, that all change is bad, or that the way we've always done things is the way we should always do things. This isn't primarily about methodology, but it's about the message. It's about the gospel. It's about the truth. It's about the call. It's about the commitment. And that never changes. We have a faith that we have been given from the Lord through his word. And that's been passed on to us from past generations of godly men who have held on to, they have guarded the trust deposited to them. They have kept the faith. They have fought the fight. That's that's the language we hear from Paul to Timothy, and that's the language that we hear from Joshua to the next generation. I have kept what God has given me. I have done what God has charged me to do. I have believed what God has given in his word. You need to do it now. And that is faithful leadership from generation to generation. One of the things I love about Forest Hill Presbyterian Church is the fact that we are a multi-generational church. Uh, in some cases, we have three generations of the same family worshiping together in our church. And so you have the grandparents and the parents and the children, and the faith is being passed on from generation to generation faithfully. You know, And it's possible we could see fourth generation um, within our church with before too long. And so we rejoice in that, right? That, that is what we long to see. But sometimes faithfulness, steadfastness, holdfastness can be loveless. There, it can be a cold orthodoxy that is not from the heart sincere, but it's just like, this is the way we've always done things. This is the way we're always going to do things. Um, I was watching a YouTube video last week about a guy who was taking a tour through Amish country in uh, south, southeastern Ohio. And he's taking this tour through Amish country as an outsider learning about the Amish for the first time. And the most traditional, most conservative group of Amish actually don't know the Lord. Like... They, they only read the Bible in, in a high German, which none of them really speak that much. And they have very strict traditions about what you wear and how you wear it and, and what you're allowed to own and you know what color this and that has to be of what you... 
but there's not there's not a heartfelt love for the Lord and there's not an understanding of the gospel. Uh, they believe that basically you need to keep the traditions to keep the traditions. So that's not what Joshua wants for the people. So he not only tells them to keep what is written, but he also tells them here in verse 11, be careful therefore to love the Lord your God. Because it's not enough to just keep the ways of God or guard the truth of God. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. He then gives them a warning. And the warning comes on a, a very positive foundation, and that is that not one word of all the things that God has said have failed. Right? It's in verse 14. Not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord your God has promised concerning you. All of them have come to pass for you. Not one of them has failed. That is a, that is a strong foundational promise. And it reminds me of 2 Corinthians 1.20, one of my favorite Bible verses. You've, if you've been around me much, you've heard me quote it before. All the promises of God find their yes in him that is in Christ. All the promises of God are yes in Christ. There's not a single promise of God that has fallen to the ground, that has failed to come to pass, that has been dropped or forgotten. They are all yes in Christ. And so what Joshua says to this next generation is even more true of what's been told to us. And yet, in the book of Hebrews, we have a warning for us as New Testament believers, it's very much parallel to this final paragraph warning that comes to this generation. To this generation, Joshua says to them, just as all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you have been fulfilled for you, so the Lord will bring upon you all the evil things until he has destroyed you from off this good land that the Lord your God has given you if you transgress the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, then the anger of the Lord shall be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the good land that he has given you. Just as God keeps his promises, so God also keeps his warnings and his threatenings. There's a couple of very famous passages in Hebrews in chapter 6 and chapter 10 that warn against trampling the blood of the Son of God underfoot, spurning the grace of God, rejecting the sacrifice of Christ, and basically saying, if you do that, there's going to be no hope for you because there's no other sacrifice for sins. There's no other way for you to come to God. If you reject Christ, if you've received the truth and you know that it's true and you've made that profession and you say, no, nope, don't want it. I'm going to go out into the world. I'm going to reject Jesus. Then you're walking away from the only salvation there is. And it is a, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, Hebrews tells us. So that warning language is, is still there. Sometimes people think this misguided notion of once saved, always saved, which is a, a really a twisted um, version of the perseverance of the saints or the preservation of the saints. God does keep all of those whose hearts are truly his. But if you walk away from Christ, if you deny the faith, if you embrace the world, if you reject Christ, then you were never saved. You never had your heart changed. The, the perseverance, the preservation of the saints is a, is a precious doctrine that calls for perseverance. It calls for us to hold on to the things that we've been given. So that's our word for today is hold fast to the good promises of God fulfilled in Christ in love. Don't depart from them to the right or to the left. Don't go after the world and its ways, but stick with Jesus, the fulfillment of the promises of God, and walk in close fellowship with him and be careful to love him and to follow after him because he's the one who holds us in his love. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. It's challenging. It's comforting. None of your good promises fail. 
but also none of your threats or warnings are given in vain. So, Father, hold us in Christ. And we thank you for Jesus, the fulfillment of all of your promises. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, tomorrow we're going to wrap up the book of Joshua with chapter 24. Hope you can join us for that. And as always, of course, I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord.